Welcome back. In earlier modules, we progressed from learning to define a problem to learning how to do so with the use of data and evidence. In fact, we had two modules, one on data analytical thinking, explaining why to use data to define your problem, and another on strategies for how to do so, learning to use data in practice to accelerate your own projects. Now we deepen our discussion of data to introduce you to one of the most powerful and important governance innovations of the last decade, the policy of open government data. As we shall see, open data policies are a key enabler for one of the most important sources of information and evidence available to you to use when solving public problems. By the end of this module, you should be able first to define open data, to understand how open data policies can be used to make data available for public problem solving, and three, consider what open data might be available to you to use when defining your problem. Okay, let's get started. Edmund Halley, the 17th and early 18th century astronomer who lent his name to Halley's Comet, published an article on annuities in 1693. His population table was based on data collected for the years 1687 to 1691 from the city of Breslau, now called Wroclaw, by the Protestant pastor of the town, Caspar Neumann. This work is now seen as a major event in the history of demography and the first major work of actuarial science. It is also a wonderful illustration of the value of sharing data openly. By giving Haley the raw information, Neumann enabled more value and insight to be created than had he kept the data for himself. Such collaboration is what makes open data truly transformative. The organization or individual that collects and maintains information is not always in the exclusive position to use it well. By opening up and sharing data, that enables the collaboration of people with diverse skills and talents and insights to work together. By making data open, you enable others to bring fresh perspectives, insights, and additional resources to your data. And that's when it can be really valuable, both to you and to others, for public problem solving. Okay, so what is open data specifically? Government has always collected data. It gathers information from companies in its role as regulator. It tracks statistics about the economy and society in its role as a policymaking body. And it collects data from citizens in its role as provider of public goods and services. But what distinguishes open data from other types of data is that it is publicly available, can be freely accessed and used, and is capable of being processed by a machine. That is, to be considered open, data must be both technically and legally accessible. To make it technically accessible, data must be available in a form that a computer can access and use. To be legally accessible, data must be licensed in such a way that anyone can use and reuse the information without fee or restriction. When data is legally and technically open, anyone with the right tools, whether they are the data owner or not, can create sophisticated and useful tools, conduct analysis across data sets that will enable empirical problem solving and advance both social good and economic growth. Take the example of Mejora tu Escuela. Created by the Mexico Institute of Competitiveness, or IMCO, Mejora tu Escuela is an online platform that makes government data about Mexico's schools publicly available. The website provides parents with comparative data so they can compare their school's results to others, thereby empowering them to demand better quality education for their children. It publishes expenditure data, giving activists, administrators, policies and policymakers, and journalists the means to dig deeper, to spot fraud and corruption, and to advocate for change. This is exactly what happened in 2014 when a report by IMCO revealed that over 1,400 teachers on the public school payroll were supposedly more than 100 years old, with most having the same birthday, and that many earned more than the president of Mexico. No, the school board had not discovered Ponce de Leon's mythical fountain of youth. Rather, the story of Mejora tu Escuela illustrates how, when government makes information free of charge and readily downloadable in digital form, such open data can solve problems. In this case, federal authorities had required states to provide information about the condition of schools, payrolls, and other expenditures. But it was civil society activists at IMCO who created the platform to make that information accessible to citizens, and who also scrutinized that information, ultimately exposing rampant malfeasance that was previously hidden. 
Although the government initially prevaricated, claiming clerical error, the ensuing media frenzy over the website helped to prompt reform and a shift of responsibility over education from states to the federal government. Ultimately, the activists and the federal bureaucracy worked in parallel, addressing this local level corruption and acting to improve Mexico's schools. Open data matters for the reasons using data matters in the first place. We can use it to spot mistakes, outliers, and rare events, and to help us target scare resources more efficiently. Let's consider a few more examples of open data being put to work. First, open data sometimes achieves greater government accountability. In the United States, at the federal level, open data facilitated the creation of USAspending.gov, a set of online tools for exploring the federal budget. Opening local government data about public works in Zanesville, Ohio, revealed a 50-year pattern of discriminatory water service provision. While access to clean water from the city of Zanesville water line spread throughout the rest of Muskegon County, residents of the predominantly African-American area of Zanesville in Ohio were only able to use contaminated rainwater or to drive to the nearest water tower and or truck the water back to their homes in bottles. Opening the data laid bare the truth and led to a successful civil rights lawsuit against Zanesville back in 2008. Second, open data can improve the delivery of services. At the state and local level, increasing access to open data has allowed entrepreneurs and developers to build tools such as smart transit apps, citizen-facing information services, and business or government-facing data visualization and analysis platforms. For example, both transit authorities and commercial providers use open transportation data to tell commuters when to expect the bus or subway along their route. The company Retrofficiency analyzes energy consumption data to allow utilities, energy service providers, and building owners, for example, to identify buildings with high energy savings potential. Third, open data also enables the creation of tools to improve consumer choice and citizen decision-making in the marketplace. For example, data collected by the government from universities has been transformed by the Department of Education into a calculator, the so-called college scorecard, to help parents and students make more informed financial decisions about their college education. Sometimes the benefits of open data ripple out beyond government accountability. For instance, open data can catalyze greater business competition and entrepreneurship. Think of the wealth and jobs created by the government's release of both weather data and geolocational data, which enabled weather apps and GPS devices, re respectively. The Open Data Institute notes that the global market for open data could be as high as $5 trillion. Thousands of companies worldwide now use open government data as a core business asset. One example of this is the company Brightscope which worked with previously locked up Department of Labor Form 5500 retirement plan data to offer better decision-making tools to investors once that data was available. A decade ago, open data was built on a mere idea, a call for action by pro-democracy activists wanting government to be more transparent. Today, it encompasses a movement that is focused on solving public problems. Open data policies have helped to drive that change. On his first day in office in 2009, fulfilling an earlier campaign promise, President Obama signed the Memorandum on Transparency and Open Government, declaring that, quote, information maintained by the federal government is a national asset, close quote, and calling for new technologies to put information about agency operations and decisions online and to make that readily available to the public. In addition, the policy made clear that because the collection of data by government is paid for by the taxpayer, it makes sense to give that data back to the public to use it for free. When the government's open data repository, called data.gov, originally launched in May 2009, it made 47 data sets searchable, turning the principles of the memorandum into practice by creating a tangible and central place for agencies to list government data and for the public to find it. Later that year, the Office of Management and Budget directed federal agencies to release not only data about the workings of government, but also high-value information. The choice to broaden the 40-year-old definition of government transparency responded to what both technologies of big data and the technologies of collaboration could make possible today. The directive emphasized the broad public benefits and the need to disclose new kinds of government information as open data such as locations of reported crimes, weather information, and information that could foster new businesses. 
In 2013, the federal government recommitted to its open data policy by issuing an executive order on making open and machine readable the new default for government information. That was designed to advance and accelerate open data implementation in the federal agencies. Entrepreneurship and innovation, rather than accountability, are emphasized in the order. It makes clear that making information resources easy to find, accessible, and usable can fuel entrepreneurship, innovation, and scientific discovery that improves Americans' lives and contributes significantly to job creation. Further laws have followed, broadening the scope of data covered under open data statutes and policies. The Digital Accountability and Transparency, or Data Act of 2014, calls for publishing all federal government spending data as open data in standardized formats. There is also the Open Public Electronic and Necessary Government Data Act, or the Open Government Data Act, which was signed into law in early 2019. It calls for inventorying and publishing all government information as open data. Today, there are a quarter million federal data sets online on data.gov. And just about every state and hundreds of cities release some data as open data and have some form of open data portal or website. Despite this, the need for continued open data policymaking is as strong as ever. An open data barometer survey of 1,725 data sets covering 115 countries found that nearly 90% of priority data sets remain closed. Only 7% of the data governments collect is actually fully open, and one of every two data sets is machine readable, and only one in four data sets has an open license. But the bipartisan interest in evidence-based approaches to governing has fueled demand for and the supply of access to more open data, administrative information of all kinds, including data that agencies collect about companies, workplaces, and the environment. Using open data is a great way to get data to use to define and understand your problem. However, before you push ahead to identify how to use open data to better define the problem you're working on, remember to make sure you have started first by defining the problem, as we have previously discussed. Without knowing the problem, it will be hard to know what type of data you need, so go over the exercise for defining your problem. Also, Review the exercises in Module 5, designed to get you thinking about what data you need. But now, let's finish by considering whether the data you need is or might be available already as open data. First, consider the availability of the required data. Is it likely that the government, that is your own agency or another, collects the data that would be useful for you in solving your problem? Well, you can start with your own state's open data catalog, Often these are not comprehensive sources of available data, and other relevant agencies need to be engaged to identify available data sets. There are numerous aggregators of open data you can consider. For example, try the U.S. Census Bureau or the Urban Institute. Depending on your field of interest, different federal agencies, such as the EPA for environmental data, or the U.S. Department of Labor for labor data, or the FBI for crime statistics, all offer access to free and machine-readable data. Open Corporates is another wonderful example. It's the largest open database of corporate data in the world collected from governments globally. So once you find the data, is that data fully open or accessible to you in a machine-readable form, enabling you to use it readily for analysis? If not, can you identify external or internal partners with the relevant expertise to help you prepare the data for use? One strategy is to organize a hackathon, or sometimes called a datathon, or also known as a data dive. Data dives are high energy, marathon style events where teams of volunteer data scientists, developers, and designers help mission driven organizations such as government agencies to organize, manipulate, clean, or visualize their data. If the data is not collected in the first place, what would it take to collect the data? We have previously discussed methods such as interviews and surveys, and in our next module on open innovation, we will look at how to use crowdsourcing to collect data using distributed participation. Next, consider your level of readiness to make use of the data. Do you have access to the necessary expertise to do the analysis? Again, reaching out to partners, especially in universities, can be one way to obtain the necessary expertise. Another way is the use of competitions. 
New York City, for example, gets people to use its data by hosting competitions to attract data-savvy individuals to analyze the data. The city's big apps competition invites private companies to solve public problems using open data. This challenge, overseen by the city's Economic Development Corporation, engages agency leadership throughout the planning process to open up more data. For example, a past Big Apps winning team used targeted geolocated data to create Mind My Business to assist brick and mortar food service establishments by sending alerts that help those owners predict changes in customer traffic, operate more efficiency, efficiently, and avoid fines. Private sector platforms like Kaggle also offer a community of data scientists online and ready to solve problems, usually in exchange for a prize. That concludes our short session on the power of open data. Used well, open data can generate new insights and enable us to define problems using empirical evidence. But collecting that data, deriving insight from it, and ultimately designing solutions to public problems require collaboration. And in our next module, we turn to exploring ways of using new technology to organize just such collaboration efficiently and effectively. Thank you.